Amalsar is on the border of Vyatzzor and Siunik regions. The rivers, for the most part, flowing through Armenia pass through this area, and the mineral waters of Jermuk, Armenia's national treasure, form in this area. The Vorotan River flows on the eastern slope of Amulsar, passing through Siunik, and ends up in the Araks River. The Arpa River, used for irrigation, flows on the western slope and right up to Areni. From Amulsar to Jermuk, it is 10 kilometers in a straight line. In the next 10 years, gold and silver is planned to be extracted with the help of cyanide solution. According to the proposed project, an estimated sum of 489 million US dollars is expected to be contributed into the Armenian budget through taxes. Gold extraction is entrusted to Lydian Armenia. To understand whether gold extraction from Amalsar is dangerous or not, first let us try to understand what Amalsar is as a geological object and what means of gold extraction will Lydian implement. Any mountain is a living organism, which consists of various layers and contains all the elements of Mendeleev's periodic table. The mining engineer is interested in the mountains where the content of this or that element has, for example, a profitable amount of gold. At Amalsar, all chemical substances are hardened, or, as scientists say, are dormant and safe as long as there is a natural protective layer of the mountain with its vegetation. From the moment the protective layer of the mountain is disturbed, it triggers irreversible chemical processes, just like the apple core is subjected to change when its protective layer is removed. The iron in the apple is oxidized and the apple changes color. Various Amalsar substances will change their chemical composition from contact with air and water by forming new formations. Prior to removing the protective layer of Amalsar, potential chemical formations and the danger they would pose for the environment should be scientifically assessed. In 2005, Geoteam CJSC, now called Lydian Armenia, is registered in Armenia while at the same time Lydian International is established in the British Offshore Jersey Zone, which later becomes the 100% shareholder of Geoteam CJSC. This company, which has no prior experience in the field of mining, has made attempts to exploit mines in Turkey, Kosovo, and Georgia, but the activity has not moved to an active phase. This company, however, succeeds in obtaining all the Amalsar mine exploitation permits in Armenia. Overlooking the unfavorable data on geological exploration of those territories in the Soviet era, Lydian announced in 2009 that 17 tons of gold reserves were available in Amalsar. A few months later, the number grew to 53 tons, currently reaching 70 tons of gold. Lydian International, on the front page of its website, announces to the world that it has discovered the largest gold mine in Armenia, whereas Sotsk gold reserves are estimated at approximately 155 tons. The law on Lake Sivan clearly states that ore processing is prohibited if it is organized in the immediate area of impact of the lake basin. With the 2013 decision, the government amended the draft of the territorial plan for the catchment basin of Lake Sevan, which had been operating for 10 years. The expert committee for conservation of Lake Sevan has issued a positive opinion on the Amalsar project. If this project is not entirely safe, this does not mean that it should be allowed with some reservations. It means the project has to be banned until it meets all the requirements. They have invented the third form of permit, permission with reservations. But exactly these reservations mean that the existing project does not comply with the law. There are also radical moods in Gundeva's community. Some even tried to stop the mine exploitation by appealing to the court. We demand that the court render a judgment of invalidating the mining permit. This exploitation permit will violate the rights of many Armenian citizens, specifically in Amulsar area, the right to healthy life, the right to other free economic and alternative activities, the right to healthy treatment and the right to be engaged in any other economic activities in general. The cyanide pad is located about one kilometer away from the Arpa River Valley. Numerous lands up to Areni are irrigated by Arpa's waters, and this river is of great importance for the nature and population of this region. 
Cyanide heap leaching technology will be used in Armenia for the first time, and the seismic resistance of this platform is one of the most important concerns. Today there is an active seismic activity in our region. There are predictions about a strong earthquake. In my opinion, the magnitude of the possible earthquake has been miscalculated. The upper threshold of the possible earthquake has been stated as 7.2 magnitude, while for that area, it should be 7.5 magnitude. Increasing or decreasing of one-tenth of a magnitude results in a ten-time difference in the construction cost. If the predicted earthquake occurs in our region, this dangerous plant with its chemicals will come into contact with Arpa River and will greatly damage it. The other problematic issue, which according to some experts is uncontrollable, is the problem of acid drainage. In the course of Amulsar mine exploitation, atmospheric precipitation and contact with the air will produce acidic waters that are likely to mix with the Amulsar underground waters. We have highly acidic waters in the mine area. There is the Benik small pond. Lydian's materials state that many sources do not conform to the drinking water standards as a result of natural acidic drainage. That is to say, we already have acid drainage phenomenon prior to meddling. According to the Ministry of Nature Protection, we do not have the respective specialists to give an opinion on acid drainage, but the practice allows to hire such specialists from abroad, which the ministry did not do either. We talked to Andrei Sobolevsky, a mining contaminated water treatment specialist with 28 years of experience. The issue of acid drainage has come up 30 to 40 years ago in North America as a very serious problem for mining that requires a long-term solution. The long-term works, which are expensive, led to the conclusion that this is a wrong approach to the solution of acid drainage problem. Otherwise, you will have to spend tremendous amounts of money for centuries to get rid of the consequences, and they will be several times exceeding the amount earned from the extracted minerals. In Amulsar's case, it's about 300 years of acid drainage. Water systems are chemically very complex, and a domino effect often takes place. A small alteration in one part triggers a serious chain reaction of problems. For example, this may lead to the Sevan waters not being suitable for irrigation. Armenian environmentalists, pointing out the above-mentioned dangers, have repeatedly carried out various protest actions against the government and Ameria Bank, which has provided a 24 million US dollar loan to Lydian, the company keen on exploiting a mine without actually having the funds. In general, the people and organizations involved with the mine are remarkable. For many years, rumors have circulated that this mine is at the center of attention of Ambassador Sargsyan and Prince Charles. At various times, the International Finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank, and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development have financed or been a shareholder of Lydian International. Founder of Amber Capital, Joseph Marie Urlian, is a 4.77% shareholder of Lydian International. At the same time, he is a member of the AGBU Central Board of Directors and has 11.86% shares in Artsakh Hydropower Plant. Ameria Bank, founded by Ruben Vardanian, a philanthropist and businessman, co-founder of the Aurora Humanitarian Award. In Armenia, the compensation costs paid to the state for hazardous waste were defined by law in 2006. These finances are necessary for the state budget, for the management of possible waste hazards. According to this price list, Lydian Armenia had to pay 5 billion US dollars to the budget for only 100 million tons of second-class hazardous waste and at least 375 million US dollars for 300 million tons of waste rock. As a reminder, the gold and silver from Amilsar are estimated at about 3 billion and taxes to the state budget will amount to 489 million US dollars in 10 years. However, today mining companies are exempt from the costs of waste, which makes our country attractive for such unsustainable programs.